Let's take a look at how we might be able to deal with some lens flare. Especially when you try to get the sun to be in your photograph, then most likely that sun is going to reflect off the front element of your lens. And any dust you have within your lens on also on the front element of your lens is going to become pronounced and you're going to get lens flare. So let's see how we can reduce or eliminate lens flare. Here's an example when I was in Santorini and I captured this shot. Well, let's deal with this on a few different levels. First, what I'm going to do is over my layers panel, I'm going to create a brand new empty layer. And I'm going to deal with things like this, where the color just shifts a little bit. To do so, you can change the blending mode of an empty layer down here to the bottom to color. Then, in your tools panel, you can grab the paintbrush tool. And with the soft edge brush, you can choose a color from the immediate surroundings. Here I see kind of a greenish color, and I'm going to go just outside that. I'll hold down the Option key, Alt and Windows, and I'll click. What that does is it chooses that color to paint with out of your image. Then I can just paint over that area and we'll be shifting the general color to what we're painting with. I can do the same thing here. I see this kind of yellowish area. I'll go just outside of it, one side or the other, option click to tell it what color I'd like to copy from and then paint it in. That's not going to change the brightness. It's only going to shift the color. So I could go up to an area like this where I see kind of rust around this area, go just outside the rusty area, option click, alt clicking if I was in Windows, and then paint. The option clicking just chooses the color you're going to paint with. And then I could go in here and get rid of that kind of rusty look. Usually I'd be a little bit more careful with where I paint, but it gives you the general idea. Then I'm going to create another new layer to work on. And I'm going to come over here to my spot healing brush. And with the spot healing brush, if I'm going to work on an empty layer, I also need to go to the top of my screen and turn on this checkbox called Sample All Layers. The default setting has that turned off, and that would make it ignore the rest of the picture and only pay attention to the active layer, which is empty. I'm going to make sure my brush is a hard edge brush. That way it has control all the way out to the edge of my brush. And now I'll take these lens flares where they're surrounded by the proper color and they don't have any unique detail within there and I'll just paint over them, let go. If it messes up, I'll simply try a second time. And most of the time, I give it three strikes and then it's out. If it ends up messing up three times, I'll just get a smaller brush each time. And most of the time, it'll fix itself. Now when you do this, in order to have a smooth end result, make sure you're working on a 16-bit image. You can tell that by looking up here at your file name, and at the very end, if you see the number 16, that'll usually give you a smooth result. If you see the number 8 instead, then do this. Change it to 16. Even if the original image was in 8-bit, switching to 16 will make it so you get smooth results when working on skies. So I can come in here and any time any kind of lens flare is surrounded by the proper color and there doesn't need to be any overly unique detail. <laughs> here it might choose the wrong stuff, but let's give it one more chance. Uh, but we should be able to get rid of those. Those are relatively easy, like this guy right here, surrounded by the right colors and what should be in there doesn't have to be overly unique. It should just be smooth sky should be able to fix the vast majority of those. So I'm just going to go in here and fix a few of these to show you that anything that is surrounded on all sides by the proper color and does not need any overly distinct detail to be put in, you can just use the spot healing brush and get rid of the vast majority of those. It's only when the thing that you need to retouch is interacting with something else. Like, uh, let's see, let me get a smaller brush and just get rid of a few more of these. And then I will find areas where we'd need to deviate. But you don't want to deviate until you've tackled the majority of the easy parts. And all these ones I'm clicking on right now have consistent color all the way around, all sides. And what should be 
replaced with is something that's a relatively consistent brightness. There's no distinct detail. There's not like there's a crease or uh, something similar to be put in there. Then if that's the case, we can just come in here with our uh, spot healing brush and retouch them out. But now I'm starting to get to the point where I'm running out of areas that really should uh, be replaced with rather generic content. Instead, what's left over really needs specific uh, brightness levels uh, as far as the changes go. So let's see how we can deal with that. I'm still going to come over here and I'm going to use a healing brush, but this time I'm going to use the normal healing brush. And I'm going to do something a little odd. First, I'm going to turn on this align checkbox up here. The default setting has that turned off. Then I'm going to go to the very center of this starburst and I'm going to try to approximate the exact center. And I'm going to tell it to copy from that spot by holding down the option key, Alt and Windows, and clicking. Then I'll let go of the option key and without moving my mouse, I'm going to click again, which means let's actually apply that information right here. And I just did. Now that might make sense, but what it did is when you have the align checkbox turned on and you option click in one spot, all clicking in Windows to say, this is where I want to copy from. And then you click again right in that spot. You're just locking in that I'm not trying to move away from the center. So with this, I'm going to get a larger brush and I'm going to move up here. And right now it just, you don't see anything in my brush, but it's actually telling me I'm copying from this exact area and I'm about to reapply it without repositioning it. What I want to do though is rotate this piece over to here. And I can do that using my keyboard. To do so on a Mac, I hold, on, hold down Shift and Option. On Windows, so that's Shift and Alt. Then I'm going to use the greater than symbol on my keyboard while I have those other two keys held down. Watch what happens right where my mouse is. Here goes. You notice it rotating towards the right and eventually that other little sun ray is going to come in and line up just where I need it, right about there. Now I got to decide how big of an area do I need to change. I want this brush to be just the littlest bit bigger than the problem. I'm going to click right there and we just retouched out our first area. Let's see if I might be able to use it right here and maybe right there. Yeah, we were able to get rid of most of that. Now let's find another area that's kind of interacting with one of those sun rays. There's one right here. Now when I move my mouse over there, you see it doesn't quite line up with it, what's inside my brush. So again, I do shift and option and I use the greater than and less than symbols and that's going to rotate what we're applying and I just need to rotate it until it perfectly aligns with the ray that's here. Then I can go over here and just click and let go. Click and let go if I need to retouch that. It can retouch things out. All I'm doing is I'm copying really from another ray that's in here and rotating it over. So for this area here, you just move there and I see the ray is not lining up. So again, shift option, greater than or less than, whatever it takes to get that to line up sun ray wise. Then retouch it. Come down to the next one. That's looking like it's lining up pretty nice to begin with, so I'll just apply it. I'll come in here. Here it looks like that's lining up pretty good to begin with, so I might get a slightly smaller brush because it's a smaller air that needs to be retouched and paint over that. Okay, and all we gotta do is keep going. Here's another spot. It looks like it's already lining up. If not, it's off by like one degree, but I'll apply that. Maybe out to there, out to there. And just anytime you get that distinct detail, look right here, it's not lining up. So sh shift option, rotate it back. Use that greater than or less than symbol until it gets to the right angle. Then we can apply it. All we're doing is copying from one little blade over and it's been rotated into place. Uh, here, I don't think I, well, yeah, I do need to get something to show up there. So let's do same keyboard shortcut. Might take it a little while because I'm going to rotate a distance right about there. I do see something coming in though. I think I've actually rotated it back to being aligned with the original. So I'll go uh, clockwise until I get to the next sun ray. If there's some sort of weird detail there, I might need to keep going until I get a clean sun ray that does not have any weird artifacts. Maybe right about there. And let's see if we can retouch that out. Sure can. 
uh, then we'll come down here and it doesn't line up. So exact same keyboard shortcut until it lines up. Now it looks like it does. There we go. All we were doing is copying from two sun rays over. Uh, get to this one right in this area. I don't see anything in there. So I'm gonna use the same keyboard shortcut to rotate until I see a star ray come across that area. It might take it a few moments to get there. Here it comes. There we go. And then let's see if we can do a little retouch using that information. Now there it didn't work out because watch, when I click, look at where it's copying from. Do you see a cross here on my screen? That's where it's copying from. You see it's one, two, three star rays over and that has a lens flare on it. So I might need to choose undo a few times to get that back to the way it used to look. And I might just need to continue rotating until I get to a star ray that does not have any artifacts on it. And sometimes it takes a while to rotate. It all depends on what your keyboard repaint rate is as far as how fast it'll go. But there comes another star ray and right there it lines up. So now I can retouch. You can see how far over if you look at the crosshair that I'm actually copying from. There we go. So let's see, right here we'll do one more. I'm just gonna go to this area and I'll rotate. So I'm using shift option and the greater than or less than. Sometimes the sun ray won't be wide enough and if that's the case, just go to one side where you don't go all the way across its width, go down its middle and then you can get it to line up on different sides. But let's take a look. Now, I could go back at this point to the spot healing brush and get any isolated spots because if they're completely surrounded by consistent color and they need no distinct detail in there, we can easily do it with a spot healing brush. So stuff like this, that's no problem. It's where we have the actual rays that need to be there that we can't use this spot healing brush and we need to feed it specific uh, detail. So let's take a look at what we've done. Over here, my layers panel. You see we have two additional layers uh, other than the original, the originals at the bottom. Uh, if I wanna turn off those two layers, all I need to do is go to this eyeball, hold down the option key and click. There's what we started with and I'll option click a second time. That'd be alt clicking in Windows and there's how much of that sun flare we have gotten rid of. And so that all had to do with using the healing brush and rotating our source. One thing you wanna know is that's a setting that's going to be locked in where it's gonna remember the rotation you're applying forever unless you do the following. If you go to the window menu, there's a choice called clone source. And the setting we've actually been changing is right here. It's the angle setting. And if we wanna reset this so it no longer rotates things to 114.3 degrees, click this little U-tune symbol and that'll zero it out. So now your retouching tools will work the way they used to work. And therefore, you'll be able to work on additional images without it getting in your way. And so that should give you a few ideas for how to reduce or eliminate lens flare. You're especially gonna get lens flare anytime you include the sun in the sky. If that's the case, the sun is going to fall directly onto the glass element that's on the front of your lens. And if it does, you're gonna get flare. Sometimes you can just take your hand and your hand will cast a shadow. Get that shadow to cover the front element of your lens and you won't get any lens flare because the light will not directly hit that glass element. But if you can't do that, because by doing so your hand actually gets in the frame, then you'll have to use this technique. I'm Ben Wilmore from Digital Mastery and Masters Academy. If you wanna learn a shit ton more from me, visit mastersacademy.com where you'll find over 200 hours of me teaching Photoshop, Lightroom, and photography. I'll see you next time.